Good afternoon, Rotarians, guests, and friends. We are very excited about being here today for this program that we have planned for you. Welcome as well to those of you who are on Zoom. Thank you to Marita Wade for our greeter, our hostess with those on Zoom. Thank you for joining us. We will begin our meeting today with the national anthem led by co-chair of our World Affairs, Affairs Committee, John Farmeyer. Following John will be the invocation and four-way test, which will be led by our treasurer-elect, Wes Botto. Mm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a C. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled that Hello. Hey. So would everyone uh, bow their heads or do whatever you feel like doing? Great. Uh, God, thank you for the sunshine today. Thank you for the opportunity to join in fellowship together. As we listen today to Mike Prescott, who leads U.S. Bank in ways that positively impact our region, may we all consider how we as Rotarians can come together and make a positive impact in our community as well. And lastly, you know that small miracle that you did to the Bengals last year? Would you please do that again with the Reds? Thank you. Amen. And for the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. You may be seated. Next, we will have Dr. Hux Miller, who will, is the Sergeant in Arms today. Following Hux would be Rotarian Arnie Beringer, who is our meeting sponsor today. And following Arnie will be Steve Rogers with a special announcement. Dr. Hux. Thank you, President Melinda. We have a number of guests today. And when I mention your name, please um, stand up. Uh, Dr. Brittany Zimmer is a uh, guest of Jeff Weyer, and she is with Beachmont, Chi Beachmont Chiropractic. And Kurt Gallant is from Kroger, and he's a guest of Steve King. And Scott Custis is from uh, Maury Scientific, and he is also a guest of Steve King. And then we have Lydia Steck from Cincinnati Magazine, who's a guest of Melinda Kelly. And then we have a visiting Rotarian, Ron Holenbeck, who is our assistant governor, and he's from the Centerville Club, also a guest of Melinda. And then we have someone who is a guest, but he went through classification last week, and so his name goes to the board of directors today. 
So this is his last chance to stand up as a guest. Bob Sheard from Instant Test Prep, and he's a guest of his, of his wife, Stephanie. Arnie? And then Steve Rogers, if you'll be ready right after he finishes. Hit, uh, something to adjust the slide, maybe. That one. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Arnie Berenger. Um, I was told to keep this to 60 minutes. <laughs> seconds, so I'll, I'll get right to it. Um, so I own Seco Equipment. Seco is a manufacturer sales rep company that was started by my grandfather in 1961. Um, my father and my uncle got in the business in 1974, and I spent 17, I'm an environmental engineer, I spent 17 years with Sun Chemical, and in 2011, I was my dad's retirement plan, so I came into Seco and, and uh, my cousin and I bought our fathers out. So we're the third generation to have Seco equipment. And we represent about 15 different companies. And we sell to heavy industry. So the bigger and dirtier, the better for, for guys like me. It's AK steel, chemical plants, power plants, um, that kind of stuff. So if there's a smokestack and it looks kind of dangerous, that's where I, I, I like to be. Um, so we sell all these kinds of things here, which I won't uh, go into the details. I just thought the best way to, to show you the kinds of things we sell is just through pictures. So there's little fans. We sell giant fans. These kinds of things would go into power plants, you know, those big smoke stacks. It takes a lot of fan power to get that, get that stuff up a stack, so that's what they kind of look like. Heat exchangers, which is getting more popular, is... Uh, energy recovery, energy efficiency is more, more uh, popular and companies want to save money, we can help them with those kinds of things. Um, let's see. That's a nice project. That's a bag house at a steel mill. So not only do we sell the fans, but we sold the dust collection equipment to, to stop that pollution from going into the air. Um, again, just examples. I'm not going to go into... My 60 seconds is rapidly approaching, probably. Um, so again, I live in I live in Westchester, but I cover all of Kentucky. I cover from Indianapolis down to Southern Indiana. My cousin lives in Akron, so we that's how we split Ohio. But we, I've kind of grown the Kentucky. Kentucky is kind of the wild, wild west for me. There's a lot, lot of action in Kentucky, especially with Ford. A lot of action in Ohio. I'm, everybody has probably heard of Intel in Columbus. That's Got a lot of opportunities for our business as well. So it's it's nice to see the growth. Our, our biggest issue, like many of you, perhaps, is supply chain. You know, my heat exchangers, I used to quote those. We would supply those in 16 weeks. Now we're quoting 40 weeks, which is painful. I'm a commissioned sales guy, so it's 40 weeks is painful. <laughs> so wrapping up again, just some snapshots of the different things we sell. So I've got some literature out there. I'm sure all of you probably need a thermal oxidizer at home. So swing by. I'll give you a special price just, just today. With that, I'm, I'm about done. Thank you. Thank you, President Melinda. We're putting the band back together. Seriously, we need singers. Five to 10 volunteers needed to sign up to our Rotary office for changing of the guard, June 30th. Two rehearsals, June before a Rotary meeting. We're performing parodies with accompaniments and we need not have experience as a musician. But musicians are greatly appreciated. Please come. We will have fun roasting President Melinda. 
and welcoming President Steve King. Come join the show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for those announcements. Next, we will have a Paul Harris Fellow presentation done by our two-time district governor, Bill Shula, who would be followed by a new member introduction. And we're always excited to bring in new members uh, by Sparkle Worley. A new member is Sid Taylor. Bill? Thank you, President. Paul Harris Fellow. The Paul Harris Fellowship is named after Paul Harris, who founded Rotary with three businessmen in Chicago in 1905. Arch Klumpf from Cleveland, Ohio, started the Rotary Foundation in 1917 at the Atlanta International Rotary Convention. The first donation was made by the Kansas City Rotary Club in the amount of $26.50. In 1957, the Paul Harris Society was formed to recognize humanitarian giving. The fellowship was established to express appreciation for a contribution of $1,000 or more to humanitarian and educational programs of the Rotary Foundation and polio eradication. Foundation programs provide educational opportunities, food, por portable water, health care, immunizations, shelter for millions of people around the world, and addresses the seven areas of Rotary around the globe. It's one of the most solvent foundations in the world. To become a major donor, you donate $10,000 and become a major donor in Rotary International. You can become a benefactor by b pledging $1,000 in your estate uh, or life insurance. You can become a Bequest Society member if you uh, set aside $10,000 in your estate for plans for life insurance. We're still waiting for our first Arch Clump person in our district. That's only $250,000. So we've still, and, and if you become an Arch Clump member, your picture, your name is there in Rotary International on the seventh floor. So we're still waiting for number one. So keep that in mind over there. All right. And so we would like to present this award to John Farmer, who has donated. This is his plus four, and he has four sapphires. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, and he's donated between five and six thousand dollars. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Sparkle Worley uh, from DePaul Crossway High School, and this is Sid Taylor. Sid is our director of corporate work study. Uh, we are a high school, 9 through 12, and what is unique about our education, it's college prep, but our students go to work five days a month, and Sid's job is to find those jobs in corporate America. So if anybody's interested, see Sid. <laughs> um, he's been with us for 10 months and has an extensive background in nonprofit leadership and we're very happy to have him. We'd like to welcome you, Sid, and this is your first rotary pin. I won't pin it on you, but I'll give it to you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. you want to get a picture? Sure. Thank you very much and welcome, Sid. We are excited about all of our members from DePaul Cristo Ray. They are a corporate member of our club. Next, we will have two announcements, one by Don Keller, uh, Rotary's Got Talent, and the second announcement will be about Camp Allen's 100th anniversary celebration, and that announcement will be given by Fred Fisher. Thank you, President Melinda. Um, First of all, I want to 
just take one second before I talk to thank Mike Prescott. I don't know how many of you know this, but for, I don't know, three or four years, um, Mike helped with uh, us get the uh, lead sponsorship for B2A from U.S. Bank. So um, thank Mike for that. <clears throat> So I'm up here today to talk about Rotary's Got Talent, and it is Rotary crunch time. As we always know in Rotary, nothing happens till the last minute. We were at the last minute. Um, I need to know by next week if we've got anyone who would like to participate in our Rotary's Got Talent show. I've talked about this a couple of times in the past. I have one volunteer so far. Um, so if you are inclined to dance, sing, do lip sync, um, whatever your talent might be, let me know in the next week because um, we need to get things moving and, and stage and everything else. If not, there is a fallback. Um, the event is not canceled. Um, as you know, as we've talked about in the past, the event is on Saturday evening, June the 25th. Um, and as I talked about before, we have ended up combining this with the red light table event that was canceled because of COVID um, back in January. So if we do not get enough people to do it. We are just going to have a good time. We're going to have a, um, we're going to have a cookout. There'll be um, adult beverages and so forth. Again, it will be on Saturday evening, June 25th at the Stepping Stones location in Norwood on, on Drex Avenue. Um, thank you to Chris Adams for, for lending us the space for that evening. So again, if we want to have it as Rotary's Got Talent, we're all about that. That's what we were trying to do originally, but I need to know in the next week. Otherwise, either way, mark your calendar for June 25th for that evening, and we'll have a cookout and so forth. So thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, continuing our series celebrating the 100th anniversary of Camp Allen as we uh, trace some of the events that took place years ago. That's a picture of the camp, uh, the Six Acre Lake. We don't have the Six Acre Lake anymore. We have three ponds. The Six Acre Lake is where the balloons rides were. We made a field out of it because we had problems with the lake. So just a little bit of history there. Um, we're looking back through the old uh, newsletters. In 1924, we spent $2,770 on Camp Allen, we be in Cincinnati Rotary. Uh, we were leasing the camp for $100 a year from the Cincinnati Portsmouth Railroad, and we spent 485 bucks on timber and wood. So that is uh, the beginning of the facility of Camp Allen. If we move up a little bit to 1926, that's the year that Condon Schools started at a cost of $375,000. Just think how much money that was in 1926. And that's our Condon School that we have today. We first worked on it at Cincinnati General Hospital. There were 290 wards, a staff of 29 teachers, full medical staff, three teachers came over regularly from General and two from Children's Hospital. In all, we had 225 special needs students, plus 75 more at General and 40 more at Children's Hospital. So that's the beginning of the Condon School. In the late 1920s, 27, that year, Rotary Club spent $6,519 to run Camp Allen. Their big event of the year was uh, a trip to the zoo where they took in all the sites. Uh, it was a trek to move the kids from Camp Allen to the Cincinnati Zoo with all their disabilities. And it says here we had plenty to eat all day. Certainly a rotary tradition, you know. I'll just put a go through a few pictures. Um, in 1928, we contacted with, contracted with Cincinnati Georgetown Portsmouth Railroad to buy Camp Allen for $6,000. So the celebration is August 26th of the 100th anniversary, so keep that in mind. Today, as we upgrade, up, move up the calendar to today, the Camp Allen, it's a misnomer that it's just a summer camp. It is a full-time, 12-month-a-year facility for adults and children. There are renovations going on right now that you all have heard about. We'll talk about them later. 
The biggest thing we have are respite care weekends where parents can drop off their children and they have a good weekend at Camp Allen and the parents get a break. And for some of these families and the disabilities, they need a break. So now if you wonder whether the kids are having a good time or not, well, we asked them. So we'll show you. Well, my favorite thing about camp is swimming and fishing. Nature at Waterfront, which is fishing or going to the creek. Go fishing, go boating. Well, I just don't the time that we catch hot fish with hot dogs. Or some more very well. Hot dogs. Yes, they love me very much. Hot dogs. Yuck. When I go to Waterfront, I usually fish for um, bluegills or largemouth bass. Yeah, the cup probably over 15. 18 this year. I like a pound of bluegill and a pound of bass. Yes, I caught a bass. It was dancing after the hook fell off. It goes like this. <laughs> we didn't catch any fish. Oh, I have a lot of nice friends to talk to and nice, nice counselors. Um, because they're really nice and they're sweet. All the other counselors are really nice, and I really do like the counselors here at camp. Kaylee. Kaylee. She's very fun, and she's very adventurous. She does she does basically everything for me. She's like my second parent here. She's nice. She's really nice. Camp together will be a really fun place. Well, and this place is a lot of fun, and you should probably come here someday. I mean, and these friends are really kind. You could go fishing, go creaking, and go swimming. I will just have some fun. I'd also tell them all the people around here are nice. Just ask around. So Stepping Stones has over a thousand clients a year, many of them at Camp Allen, your Camp Allen, Cincinnati Rotary. Thank you. Next, we will have Doug Bolton. Doug gave a presentation during our club assembly, but the time was short, so we added him to the agenda today, and he'll give you a financial update. Doug is our current secretary treasurer of the club. Thank you, President Linda. Sorry for the art, the uh, the eye chart here, but um, this what you're seeing right how, right now is um, our fiscal year ends in June. Um, so this is a nine month uh, progress report. Uh, on this slide. So the middle column there, nine month actuals, you see that we've spent about $328,000 against a budget of about $329,000. So doing well as far as managing our expenses. You can see the big variance is in the weekly meeting um, costs. Obviously we've had fewer people attend uh, in this uh, current fiscal year uh, than what we budgeted for. Um, and that's helped us out. Um, so we'll cross our fingers that uh, the final three months of the year look the same. Uh, this time, like any business, uh, you're beginning to think about your next year's budget. So the next slide shows um, kind of a first look at, um, Sarah, if we, yeah, there we go. So this is kind of a first look at our next year's budget. And, um, so, uh, you know, right now we're sitting at about an 8% overall increase um, based on, um, you know, some pretty modest um, uh, salary increase costs, essentially uh, cost of living raises for our two phenomenal employees. Um, our weekly meeting costs, we're anticipating obviously more people coming to lunch, uh, and so there's a big increase there. We have a, a bit of a rotary dues uh, international uh, increase that uh, we're needing to budget for. And then some of the other line items are fairly insignificant. The rotary meetings, um, you know, so we um, have the benefit this fiscal year that the international conference is in Houston, Texas. Uh, next year's international conference is in Australia, so there's a little more expense um, for, for that. So this is just a first pass. Um, it's not fully cooked or baked, um, you know, but it obviously does indicate, um, you know, exactly how we spend your dues money as well as uh, what you put forward as far as lunch expenses. And I will say that we are expecting an increase in food costs um, uh, next year. The Hilton has already told us that. So uh, planning for all of those things. So 
Um, bottom line is, thank you for your continued commitment, uh, your dues paying um, uh, loyalty, and uh, we look forward to continuing to be transparent with you about uh, the status of the finances of the club. Thank you very much, Doug, for that. Uh, with the executive committee spending a lot of time on looking at the budget for this year and next year, I'd also like to recognize at this time Mary Brandstetter. Mary is on the personnel committee, and she's done a lot of work this year. Mary, would you please stand or wave your hand? Mary's done a lot with us this year. She's also edited the policy handbook that had not been edited for some time or modified, so she gave us the first look before we made some additional changes. So thank you very much, Mary, uh, and others on the personnel committee who's given input, um, including Michael Schmidt and also Stephanie Bird. We have some birthdays to celebrate. Uh, yesterday we had two, Bob Brandstetter and Angie Ferguson, April 13th. And April 14th, we have Herschel York, who turned 100 years old today. Let's give our Rotarians a round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have Split the Pot. 25% uh, of the pot goes to the winner, and that is $47. We pull for the accumulating pot for the Queen of Hearts. Anyone can have the win from the first ticket draw. Only Club 17 members um, can pull for the Queen of Hearts. So if you're not a Club 17 member, this is a good time to put your application in so you'll be able to pull for the accumulating pot. The accumulating pot right now is $1,470. And $78. So we'll ask Mike Prescott to please pull the winning ticket. Thank you. The last four digits are nine, zero, seven, six. Nine, zero, seven, six. Michael Schatzman. <laughs> All right, let's see if Michael can pull and win the, the Queen of Hearts to win the accumulating pot, $1,478. Not this time. I couldn't see. What, what was that? What card was that, Chris? Sarah, what card was it? Jack of Spades. All right, so the pot, the pot thickens. So we look forward to the accumulating pot for next week. Good try, Michael. Hands-on service, our next hands-on service project will be our District 6670 Day of Service. It will be April 30th from 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, we will work with other Rotarians in the Dayton Club and uh, we will build a children's garden, a solar garden, and projects in the Dayton's Edgemont Chapel, Miami Chapel area, and Madden Hills area. Please sign up through the E-Rays. Uh, Sarah and Christy has that information out there. If you're interested in participating, we would love to have you. And again, today we are very excited to have our District 6670 Assistant Governor, Ron Hollenbeck. Ron, would you just stand, please? He answers a lot of our questions when we, we have them regarding our club. We have uh, one meeting this afternoon. The hands-on service committee will not meet today again. Just contact Dr. Hux Miller if you have any questions. Um, the board of directors, we will be meeting today in the Julep room on the third floor. So if we could start our meeting, please, promptly at 1.35, that would be great. Next week, the, our meeting is a very exciting meeting again. Our corporate roundtable members, committee members, have planned a great panel presentation for us for next week, and they've been working very diligently on that panel. Would our corporate roundtable members please stand? And Jack Scott, those supports too. Jack Scott and uh, Brett Labar, any corporate roundtable members, please stand. Thank you so very much for your efforts. And we look forward to our meeting next week. Now we will begin our meeting for today. And introducing our program today, 
will be Al Conscious. Thank you, President Melinda. Uh, Sarah, next week, let's put the queen back into the deck. All right. All right. <laughs> Today, I we're very pleased to introduce Mike Prescott. Uh, he's the regional president of U.S. Bank. Uh, he's in charge of operations in Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida, New York, and St. Louis. He joined U.S. Bank in 2011 and is responsible for all U.S. bank activities for commercial lending efforts in these regions. Previously, he served as an executive director of the Ohio Tuition Trust Authority, where he was responsible for all aspects of Ohio's 529 uh, program. Before that, he was a member of the Huntington Bank executive team. Mike graduated. To everyone's surprise. No, I'm just kidding, Mike. He, uh, he graduated with high distinction from Ohio Northern University, uh, where he earned a degree in accounting. He also earned an MBA with a focus in finance and marketing from the Ohio State University. Mike is very active in community and is currently a member of the board of the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, Mike enjoys wine fantasy football, sometimes together, right? <laughs> and he was in the Actors Union uh, for several years. Mike and his wife, Lori, uh, currently reside in Mason, Ohio. They have two adult children, Morgan and Ryan. Please welcome Michael Prescott. I gave Al the uh, boring corporate bio and said, I'll send you some more interesting stuff. Uh, I don't think that thing has changed in 12 years. I was a veteran then. I don't even know what that makes me now, an old timer. I'm not even sure. You know, the easiest way for me to explain who I am, and I say this all the time and it's very sincere, I'm a blue collar guy in a white collar world. It's a true story. My grandfather was literate, signed with an X, never escaped poverty. Uh, in fact, the only reason I'm here today is Multiple reasons. People like Don Keller rallied around me because I couldn't find my butt if you spotted me four more hands uh, 22 years ago. And they thought, let's help this kid win. And here I am now at 60, still working, still trying to make a difference in life. But also, really, it was my love of reading and the love I got from my grandparents. Probably saved my life, if I'm being really frank. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, last time I was scheduled to speak here, and I owe you guys a thank you, um, I had a kidney stone. And I lost 17 pounds in 11 days. And there was a groan in the room when they announced he's not here, he's got a kidney stone. So for that, I thank you, because it was awful. That was one of the worst things I've ever been through in my life. I was just literally pounding the bed. You know what I mean? The pain. I hope none of you have been through it. No thank you. You know, this could be titled a lot of things, because you're going to see, I'm going to give you examples of crossover in life, personal, professional. I could also title this the guardrails that lead my life, of which there are about 50 now. Um, you know, a lot of that, and I don't want to be all sappy, is I didn't have a great upbringing. I wasn't taught right from wrong. I wanted to be something, so I figured it out a lot as an adult. And I write everything down. I'm a big writer. And um, so I'm just really happy to be here today. I will tell you a couple things. Um, I was reading about Rotary a lot. And about, see, in my early 40s, I decided to be a servant in life. I feel like I'm in the right room today. I hope that resonates because I read about all of you. I know about all of you. Ollie's been telling me forever. You guys do really good work, and it's been my pleasure at times to lean in and try to help. So I just want to get that out there. Thank you for what you do. Um, I got into banking to do well. I came back into banking to do good, and I'm really trying hard. My biggest thing that's driving me crazy now, you guys, I'm running out of time. My hair is not misleading. I am getting older. Um, that really does bother me. I'm starting to look out the rearview mirror more. I'm not going anywhere. I just got a new job in the last two weeks. It's all good. Life couldn't be better, but it's uh, just really interesting. So I'm going to go through this fast. Hopefully you have some time for questions. At, in Davos in 2018, it's the big uh, European summit, the most powerful, famous people in the world. Prime Minister Trudeau said, the pace of change has never been this fast and it'll never be this slow again. This is a great line. Life is so hard right now for everybody. And that's actually part of my conclusion today. Um, 
I want to tell you, the, the, the lesson I want to make here is this. If you're running a business, out of business, et cetera, and you're not evolving and changing, as someone who sees everything for 26 states that report to me for U.S. Bank, your competitors are. They're putting in CRM, ERP, robotics, automating everything they can. We're doing it at U.S. Bank. The world's really changing fast, so we all need to change with it, right? I was at a client meeting not long ago, and they walked me through the whole script. Really great meeting. And at the end of it, I said, so let me understand this. What you do, where you do it, how you do it, and who you do it with are all changing. Do I have that right? They go, yeah, I go, but everything else is the same, right? <laughs> Thank you, you got it. There's nothing else. Everything was changing, they were dead right. And by the way, every one of those changes made so much sense. Isn't that interesting? It's, uh, it's tough right now, I, I, life and business. The next line I wrote, I do apologize that it rhymes. It's not profound, but it, it helps me. Whoops. The complexity of life has never been this high and it'll never be this low again. And that's professional and personal. I am absolutely uh, convinced of this. You know, for a long time, I was known as a guy who could see around three corners. Is my hand in front of my face? Because I can't see it. So if you're having, if it's hard for you, it's hard for me. It's hard for everybody right now. It is just really hard. Um, you know, I will tell you, and I'll probably talk about this later, the biggest career inhibitor I'm seeing right now in corporate America, and I'll talk about this briefly, is thinking on your feet, connecting dots, right? And I'll get to that. I think it might even be my next slide. Uh, it is, because I've changed this slide. I wrote this 20-some years ago, this next slide. Um, the three pillars of, of professional success. The first one's changed. I used to always say what you know. Now I've added what you and how you think. And in some jobs, that latter part's more important than what you know. Some jobs not, but some jobs yes. The who you know, I wrote that before LinkedIn was invented. I could be a billionaire if I'd have thought of that. I should have, I didn't think of it, because your network's everything, right? Who you know, and by the way, I can tell in this room, you all know each other and you like each other. That is fantastic. The last thing I write, and I have a belief in life that very few people go through the journey to figure out who they are. My value statement, missions, values, everything are written out. I started it in the 90s, almost 30 years ago. I think the greatest strength a person can have is to know who they are. And I know who I am. Uh, and it's really important to me. Um, in corporate America, this is a great truth I don't hear people talk about. Careers are made based on a leader's use of influence, not authority. We expect you to use your authority well. Your influence is what separates you. Every time I promote somebody, I sit them down. After we have the, you know, here's the deal, here's what's going on. You will be back in this room again if you use your influence well. Getting people that don't have to follow you to follow you or to do things, not your authority. It's just such a great truth of life. So I'm going to pause on this one for a while and talk about it. And I'm going to grab a little, I'm going to grab a little iced tea. I'm having, I'm having an allergy day. I've already taken like three Zyrtex, so I'm really dry mouth. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to remember when I wrote this. My daughter was two or three. Um, we were leaving downstate Illinois and my son was probably one, they're 20 months apart, and she's in the, still in a car seat, really smart kid, still in the city, I'm so proud of her, and my son's in Manhattan now, but she said, Daddy, and we were leaving what would be considered home, Daddy, how did you come from that? Is that not sad? My brother's a drug addict. It's the, I bet it touched some of you too, right? When he was 18, I was 30, I drove him up to the Ohio State Michigan football game. It was hardcore both ways. I need you to come clean with me. I'm a blessed guy. I can get you a lot of resources. Um, I was unsuccessful. And when my daughter said that to me, I knew I was gonna have to do, uh, put a dividing line between my two sides of my family life. I had to. And I was right to do it 20 some years ago. I didn't want them exposed to that nonsense. Very painful. I feel like people in my life have stolen from me, if that makes any sense, because I 
can't go home really, couldn't go home. I was home recently, but so this is something I'm really hardcore about at work. Literally first few weeks on the job at US Bank, something goes wrong. I call in the leader. I say, how are you feeling about it? He goes, that's ah, fine, we'll figure it out. I'm like, well, walk me through what happened. Because maybe I don't understand. He walked me through it. It's not good. And I go, again, how do you feel about this? Bah. I go, well, you should know. I am livid. I'm about ready to jump out this window. I'm so mad. And until you get to my level, the heat on you is going to be so bad. We failed our client. You got, I never had another meeting like that at U.S. Bank in the history of my life. The word got out. We own everything. We care about everything. The community, our clients, our vendors, everything. Um, I'm just really wound tight about that. So there are some problems that splash all over me that I care deeply about. And it, the bank, I own everything, right? That's just a great truth of life. I'll tell you a funny story about my son. He's about four or five, and he comes up to uh, uh, my wife and I, and he goes, I want to talk to you. This is weird. He goes, uh, I've decided I never know, need to learn how to read because I'm going to be a professional football player. And um, I love to laugh. Some of you know me. I just love to laugh. I just, and I'm dying. I leave the room. But as I'm leaving, my wife, and if you've met her, her nickname is the General. She is in charge of everything, including me. But um, she said, well, good luck in football because you won't be able to read the playbook. <laughs> is that a great line? And he goes, well, then I'll learn well enough to read the playbook. Um, he's in Manhattan now working on PE, which I'm conflicted about. Manhattan's fine. PE, eh, it's probably okay. Um, I'll tell you another rule of life I have that just it kind of splashes on this. It's a little tangential. It, it's more of my personal life. I have a rule, and I'll give you the saying here in a second. If I don't have authority or influence over something, I don't care because I, it's gonna eat me alive, unless it's your health. If one of you call me up and say you're sick, I do. I have a little influence. I know every doc in the city because I've been on boards. Um, I'm a big, big believer in second opinions, by the way, everybody. Um, and I will do that, I'm very spiritual. Some of you know that, some of you don't. But I really don't have much influence or authority. That I will care about, but it'll eat you alive. If you feel emotion, I deal with it hardcore. Do I have authority to fix it? Do I have influence to fix it? If I don't have either, you either accept it or you get eaten up alive. And I feel like I'd live a life for like four people. I got so much stuff coming at me all the time. So I came up with a line that some people view as negative. I don't. Apathy is life's greatest liberator. I embrace it. I just do. The list of things I care about is not that long, but boy, do I care passionately about those. You know what I mean? By the way, I was introduced to, actually it was when I got promoted at US Bank, there was a party and I got a toast. And they said, Mike's the kind of guy you want at your grandkid's birthday party. He's also the kind of guy that he's your first draft pick in the first round if you're in an alley in a fight. That's who I am. That is exactly who I am. I still love Bobby. His son's getting married to Sandy Alomar Jr.'s daughter. And I'm going to that wedding. Isn't that cool? Up in Cleveland soon. Um, you get in life, what do you tolerate? We've all heard this saying, right? I really believe this. You know what? I got pushed hard early in life. And um, God, I was a hot mess. Gosh, I was a hot mess. I was still in Columbus at the time. And I always, when I see something I didn't like, I'd always say, I'll go back to that. I'll fix it later. I'm zero for whatever on that. Nobody ever goes back, and you know, not really. And so I, I came to a belief and a concept of live, coach in the moment. And by the way, I try to do five good things for everything that's not so good. Um, this is so true, though. People know what, if you work with me or if you're related to me or whatever, you know what my tolerance level is for stuff. And by the way, I'm known as a fun loving, great dad, good husband, great friend, but there's just some things I don't tolerate. I'll tell you a funny story about this. I'm sitting at my desk. I must've been going out of town up in Mason and um, the door slams. Have you ever had a door slam so loud you feel like it changed your DNA? I mean, I woo, like that. I was just, you know, working and my wife took the kid to schools. Maybe, maybe I was catching a flight later. And she comes back and I said, what was that? Why did our daughter slam the door? She's about 11 at the time. She's 28 now. And my wife said, we didn't have the right cereal. <laughs> the general didn't have the right cereal. And I said, would she slam that door on me? Oh, never. You get in life what you tolerate, honey. 
So he cut, see all these rules, how they cut across your life just totally? I think it's just so interesting. This next one is really hard right now. Um, strategy. Gosh, is strategy hard right now? For me, strategy is allocating or matching resources and opportunities, right? And um, right now, um, opportunities change overnight. Resources come and go. In fact, I'll tell you something. I'm known to make predictions. Here's one that did not age well. Early in the pandemic, remember the supply chain crisis that we still have? This was my quote on a call in front of a couple thousand people at U.S. Bank. Oh, we're capitalists. This will be gone in three months. <laughs> that, that really, like a week later, I'm like starting to walk that one back, right? Because you realized how profound this deal was. It was amazing how quickly uh, that one didn't age well. Um, I used to sit in a conference room three days a year uh, and work on incentive plans. One of my beliefs in life and I am being funny, but I'm being a little honest. The world is run by incentive plans. Think about it. Is this what you want me to do? Because this is what I'll do if this is what you want, boss man or boss lady. It's so true. It is so true. So I, that's something I think, I think the incentive plan is one of the most strategic things in life that people often don't work on that hard. By the way, if I could be fair, I beat myself up for getting the supply chain crisis wrong. I've been screaming at my TV at Powell and yelling at everybody for 18 months or more about inflation saying, come get in my 11 year old Camry with me. Let me drive you around Mason and I'm gonna show you food costs every, that it's going up. I got the right thing right. Um, and we're in, for a, we're in for a wild ride here. I wanna be wrong. A high inflationary period in the United States has never ended without a meaningful recession, not once. It's never happened once in our history. I really, really, really want to be wrong. I think they're trying to thread a needle while driving a race car around the track. I don't know, you guys. I hope. And maybe it's mild, but we're going to need a little cleansing effect here somewhere. That's my own view. Oh, I really want to be wrong. Remember, I work at a bank. That's not a fun thing. This is a saying I heard from the vice chairman, Ron Baldwin, Don, if you remember him years ago. Lack of options clears the mind. This is derived, I did some research, from a Henry Kissinger quote, the absence of alternatives clears the mind marvelously. Isn't that good stuff? I sit in meetings all the time and people are going through this alternative, that alternative, this alternative. I'm like, stop, we have one path and it doesn't strike me as that good. I live in the world of crisis management. That's just the way things can be, right? Running a bank, things can go wrong. It's just really hard and it all ends up in my office. Lack of options clears the mind. Stop the debate. This is so clear, you guys, to me, where we're going with this thing. We have to do X, we have to do Y. I think we can make this right or maybe we can capitalize on the opportunity, et cetera. I just think it's a wonderful line. Sorry. This has been a big change. Not that, what I'm going to tell you, how business world is adapted to this. I've always said that if you rate speed as the most important variable in business, you've underrated it. I think it's so important, speed to market, speed, just speed, speed, speed. Oh, how do I explain this? Um, in the past, corporate America, if you wanted a race car, you'd build a car that wasn't great to a little bit better car. You'd have iterations of a car. Not true anymore. Now what corporate America does is they build minimally viable products. I don't know if you've heard this phrase, but I can really make it easy for you. If we want a race car and we want to be fast, we build a scooter first, then a bike, then a motorcycle, then a car, then a race car. That way we can get something to market. It's been just an amazing change in corporate America. Uh, doesn't always go well, um, but it's been a really, really big change in corporate America. By the way, it's 118. You run a great meeting. I want you to come over and run some meetings for me, the way she runs, you know, the train on time, et cetera. So I'm at my conclusion so we can have uh, questions. I'm, I'm a guy that runs a meeting tight. And if you're five minutes early, you're right on time. This last thing is, uh, one of the things I say a lot at work, 
And I was vulnerable with you today, a little bit transparent, maybe a lot. You know, we've all got a lot going on. I didn't tell you everything going on in my life. I'm having a terrible week, terrible week, personally, personally. Somebody I care deeply for is really quite ill. Um, it's just having slept all week and you just never really know what's going on in somebody's life. You just really don't, right? So just be kind to everybody. And I don't know why people can't do that. Um, if I come out hot, you gave me a reason to, but in general, I'm probably gonna hug you and tell you, hey, it's gonna be all right. Let me roll my sleeves up. I'll go get my shovel. We'll fill this hole in or whatever it takes. I'm round really tight about this. Kindness is an option and I really believe in it. And I wish more of corporate America did. Not that I'm throwing anybody under the bus because this might be on film, um, but I really do believe in it or not. I'm known as a nice guy, but I work hard and don't poke the bear. There's, uh, there's all kinds of, right, it goes both ways. So with that, I would love if anybody had any questions. Oh, wow, already, thank you. Thanks for your talk. I'd like you to tell us a story of something that you did out of compassion and love, either uh, in your neighborhood or in the community that gave you a lot of joy. That's a great question. You know, the first thing that comes to mind, um, so I don't take awards. I won't do it. I think it's phony. I think it's so phony in corporate America, all these awards. I just won't do it. But what I do is I sign up to be your chief fundraiser, and then I am the biggest pain in every one of your butts you'll ever meet um, until we get the number. So Children's Home has been really kind and dear to my heart. I think I almost tripled their all-time fundraiser when they moved it over to On the Banks. Um, I will tell you, somebody I care deeply about um, called me. It's a secret foundation in the city that supports me. Uh, they've always supported me. And I called them up and said, I want you to look at this thing. And they gave me almost $300,000. I just cried like a baby in my office because um, I want to do good for others. I'm fine, you guys. Uh, bad week, but I'm fine. My life is great. I just want life to be so good for others. The one thing I took out of my speech today is the world is run by the discontent. I'm one of them, but not for me, for everybody else. That's how I lead my life. That's a great question. Hey, that's my buddy. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So my question is, what will it take for US Bank to really embrace cryptocurrency? Oh. Do you believe in cryptocurrency? Okay. So we do have, our trust group does, have you, are you aware of that, Bob? We do, we do work with uh, cryptocurrency there. Um, what will it take? First, the answer is snarky, I wanna say time. Uh, you know what I mean? Because here's the deal. Man, have I been wrong? It's like 40,000 now, Bitcoin, right? I'm undefeated in debates against people who believe in crypto. I've never lost a debate. I don't believe in it. It's at 40,000, you guys. I heard about it when it was 80. That fact is not a friend to me arguing, it, you know what I mean? Um, it's a tough one. That's a really tough one. I think we need to understand it better. I will tell you this, currently for what it really is, for how much it's talked about in the American economy, it's like a hundred to one for its importance to what it really is, how much it's talked about, my view, right? But again, I'm the guy that didn't buy it at 80 when we had a board meeting and talked about it, and now it's 40,000, so don't go by me. I'm, I don't know, buddy, time probably, more acceptance, you know, I don't know, it's just not, it's not, it's not backed by anything. I equiv I, I, my equivocation of, of, of uh, Bitcoin, for example, is the baseball cards, uh, which I have a lot of them in my basement. If you find them valuable, great, buy them from me. But there's no cash flow associated with them or anything else. So that was a stumper. You win, I lose. I don't have a good answer for that. So, uh. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll go here and then no, there. Yep. This one's more timely. I totally agree with you about the cryptocurrency. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but buddy, we don't look so smart. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, so next week our corporate member roundtable is doing a panel discussion on travel and tourism. You're yeah. welcome to come back or send someone from U.S. Bank. 
Uh, but we're wondering, um, has business travel resumed for U.S. banks since um, travel restrictions have eased around the world, really? It has resumed. Great question. And I want to I talk about our airport real quick. Um, it has resumed, but I will tell you, we've learned a lot. Do you know that 80% of the transactions done with the bank now are digital? It was in the high 50s before the pandemic. Uh, so much change has happened. So many clients are now saying, hey, I'm busy that day, but yeah, I can meet, but just we'll just do a video conference. So I still have to travel a lot because of the markets I run and stuff. Um, so it's definitely resumed. I will tell you, if someone was asked me what I'm most worried about in Cincinnati right now, it's our airport. Do you know I have to drive to St. Louis Monday morning, like six? Because by the time I get in my truck and get, I'll be there before I'll be at Chicago airport. Um, I was going to go to the, uh, the Kansas, I went to every single Bengals playoff game. The Kansas City game, the pilot, customer friend, uh, was sick, had COVID. I couldn't get there commercially. I had three days figured out. You could, I had to go to Philly where they were expecting a blizzard. I'm really worried about our airport, you guys. I'm, you can't get anywhere. I have an offsite meeting here. People around the country came into me. First thing out of everybody's mouth is, I was in three or four airports to get to Cincinnati. So I'm really nervous about that. I'm just really, really nervous about our airport. We've got some big employers. I don't know how high their tolerance level is, and this one's getting fidgety. So um, <laughs> I love to laugh. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mike, for your presentation. We have just a... We would like to present you with one of our theme pins for the year, Serve to Change Lives, and you certainly do that. Well, thank Rotary you. Pin. And we will also give a donation to uh, the eradication of, por of polio through uh, Rotary International on your behalf and on behalf of your speech today. Thank you so very much. Let's give Mike another round of applause. Thank you for your poignant uh, quotes your sayings, and as he mentioned, there's a lot going on with everybody in the world and, you know, even in our club, so let's continue to keep each other lifted up in thoughts and prayers. You never know what people are going through, as he said, be kind. So those are very good words. Again, next week, our meeting will be as Cheryl Parker so eloquently mentioned, and Cheryl was a television personality. I just love to hear her speak. Let's give her a round of applause. She does such a great job. She recently lost her mother, and so she's recovering from that. So continue to keep her in your prayers as well. Our meeting this afternoon is the Board of Directors meeting in the Julep Room on the third floor. And next week, again, we'll have the Navigating the New Normal, Travel and Tourism Challenges and Opportunities uh, next week. So we look forward to seeing you, and make sure you bring your money for Split the Pot next week, and maybe you'll be our winner. And if you're not a member of the club yet, <coughs> guests, please make sure you get your application. You can fill it out online or on the regular hard copy. Thank you so much. All right, meeting adjourned.